Approximately six years ago, I was in a global regulatory affairs conference and I met a person from India, from Bengaluru. So I just quickly connected and I asked what she does for a living. She told me that she works in a biotech company. So I thought, oh, do you work in research? Are you a scientist? She said, no, I work on something different. I was like, what different? Biotech is all about uh, research, right? She said, no, biotech is also about getting your products passed through various regulatory bodies. I said, wow, interesting. So do you make a lot of money? What she told me opened my eyes. At that point in time, six years ago, she was earning 48 lakhs per annum salary just as a global regulatory affairs professional with six years of experience. I was like, wow, at, with six years of experience, you can earn so much? She said, yes. And that's when we start, uh, I started digging in and found out that global regulatory affairs is a real big pain for every biotech and pharma company. And that is why these companies are ready to pay everything to get the product approved. They're ready to throw every dollar on the table because they want their product approved by FDA. They, make, they want to make sure that their product is uh, in compliance with all the regulations across the world, whether it is U European, Indian, US, everywhere, right? So imagine that you cooked food and now you cannot serve because you need to, to take approval from government, right? So the same way, when you have done the R&D, got the clinical research, everything all set, but now when you send it to the F FDA, they reject it. So that is where product registration, product uh, approval is a must for all the biotech and pharma uh, products because it goes inside the body, right? So facilitating this approval process, right? Who will do? Somebody who has understanding of biotech and life sciences and also somebody who has understanding of the laws of these bodies, right? Now, these are not laws of government. These are the laws of these bodies, right? You as a regulatory affairs professional are not really working in a lab and that is what the common perception is that you have to, if you have done biotech, you have to work in a lab. No, you are actually helping a company launch its product into the market by getting the approvals quicker. You are not just facilitating it for FDA. You are also doing it for uh, EMA Europe and uh, CDSU India. Now, you are also making sure that the entire process is following the compliance and the regulatory strategy which uh, these bodies have given us uh, as per their guidelines. And we have to ensure that our product meets the quality, safety, efficacy and efficiency, whatever standards is prescribed and given to the company by these bodies. Now, we have to develop strategic approaches so that it gets approved faster because every minute which we are losing because of delay in approval is a, mon a dollar lost, right? So that is where you can come into picture. Now you can also be the single point of contact who will be communicating with the regulatory body as well as the company serving as a liaison between companies and regulatory bodies addressing queries because once you have sent the report, they will ask questions. Now you have to again reply. So there will be a lot of back and forth. So addressing queries, providing the required documentation and managing the regulatory loopholes and uh, fixing them and uh, also coordinating for uh, regulatory inspections. You must have heard that FDA does inspections into biocon, syngene plants, all of that you will be doing, right? You will be also monitoring. So you're not just coordinating, but you're also monitoring because every day new things are coming up. New laws are coming up. New guidelines are coming up from these regulatory bodies. So you are going to monitor these changes, these regulatory demands. New demand has come. Okay, now let's see if we can follow. So you are going to track the evolving global regulatory landscape and you're going to adapt company processes according to this. Now, why companies pay so much money here is because even though you did the research, even though you have clinical trial, everything done, but still you can't launch it in the market because if it is not, you know, in compliance with the guidelines. So that is why it is important. It gives you, uh, and of course the guidelines has to be followed because it will guarantee patient safety. It will ensure market access and companies will be able to launch products faster. And that is what brings money to the companies, right? And it reduces the legal risk because you've launched in the market, now somebody died, right? So that person and his family will sue the company and now we have to fight it in, out in court and pay compensation. Instead, you know, uh, fix it before it happens, right? So it will also help you and help the company and protect the brand reputation of the company, right? So this is what exactly is the work of a uh, regulatory affairs. Now the question is, where can you learn? Biotechnica is starting a special course on regulatory affairs and it is not just India, it's a global regulatory affairs and that means if you take this course, you will be 
trained for the entire, not just FDA, EMA in India, everywhere. So entire regulatory, uh, global re regulatory requirement will be training you and then we'll be placing you in these companies. So that's the beauty of this course. More details are given in the description. You can check it out. And the uh, instructor for this course is Dr. Shweta. She is uh, herself an uh, experienced regulatory uh, manager in TCS and various other top companies and she will guide you become a global regulatory manager now where can you work you can work in pharmaceutical companies you can work in biotech companies you can work in nutraceutical companies you can work in medical devices company you can work in cosmetic companies you can work in ayurvedic companies you can work in food and beverages companies so many right so it's not just you are limiting yourself to a few 10 15 companies you can work in any of these companies and if i just combine all of this probably we are talking about more than 5,000 such companies which exist just in India. If I take globally, probably it goes to 500,000, right? So that's the number of companies which we have, right? Now coming to the question is, okay, if I pursue this course, if I learn, what exactly happens to me? So you don't just limit yourself to the regular stuff. As new products will come into the market, more medicines will come into the market thanks to AI. Now these medicines has to be scrutinized, making sure that they are meeting the regulatory requirements. So obviously regulatory compliance is going to be in more demand in the future and that is why it is going to explode. So it will help you expand your career opportunities. It will be a desk job. It is not a lawyer and uh, it is not a, a job like a researcher. It is in between. Neither a lawyer not a, a researcher but in between but it has got very high salary. Like I said it can go up to 48 lakhs per annum salary just in India. If you're talking about US because there is more regulations in US it can go up to a million dollars in uh, salary. So this is huge. Now, industry demand is always going to be high for this because the regulations are new and the regulations are changing and new demand uh, for fresh talent who has got more knowledge, more exp experience and expertise is always going to be there. And now thanks to AI, more drugs will come into the market. So more compliance requirement is there. So more regulatory affairs managers and regulatory affairs professionals are required. Another aspect is this provides you career stability, you know, whether it is a recession, whether it is uh, anything, you will never hear that people are firing regulatory affairs managers and regulatory affairs professionals because you always need them. It's like, you know, a necessary um, profession. So companies can never remove a regulatory professional. So the stability is there because it is very critical for the company. And it is global. So it's not like you have to go anywhere. In fact, it can be done from home also. You can work from home. You can work from office and also you can be doing freelancing in this. You have a chance to go to US and Europe also as a regulatory affairs manager. Once you've gained experience here and a certification from us, you can get placed abroad also. So that brings in a direct impact also. Now, what happens is you are not just working in the company, you're bringing a global impact because... When you work in these companies, these products get launched and it saves a lot of lives. So if these uh, products are not launched faster, we don't save lives, right? So that is why there is a global reach. You can go abroad also. You can work from home also. You can do freelancing. You can work in India, abroad, anywhere. And this has got an interdisciplinary skill set. So we are combining the knowledge of science, whatever you have studied till now, with the law and the regulatory requirement of FDA, EMA and CDSCO. And then you also are showing leadership skills. You are uh, going in with a strategy, getting approvals, making sure the documents are correct. And the best part, like I said, is salary. It's amazing. It's very high salary. Freshers are also getting 80,000 rupees per month salary in India. So that's the best part. The only thing which you have to know is the regulatory affairs demands continuous learning because every day new regulations will come, new guidelines will come. So you have to comply, you have to learn, you have to Im implement. So this is going to be a real um, exciting role. You know, what kind of uh, job um, post positions you can get? You'll start as a regulatory affairs specialist, then you'll start become an associate, then you'll become a regulatory affairs manager. Then further on, if you want to start your own regulatory affairs consultancy, you can become a regulatory affairs consultant. Followed by that, you can even become a director of regulatory affairs for a particular pharma company. And later on, if you you know go to the global markets, you can be global regulatory affairs strategist for, say, Asia-Pacific market, for US market, for Europe market. All such things can be done. Now, the salaries for freshers, like I said, it is going from 
minimum 3 lakhs per annum it is going up to for freshers up to 80,000 rupees that's uh, I think uh, 10 lakhs per annum is the salary from 3 lakhs to 10 lakhs is the range and for, for Europe if I have to say it is 50,000 euros to 120,000 euros in USA it starts at 70,000 dollars it goes up to 150,000 dollars in best cases we have seen millions of dollars also being paid Australia if I talk about of course there also you have 80,000 Australian dollars to 1 lakh 40,000 Australian dollars now which are the companies which will hire you well, the top pharma companies, the top clinical research companies, the top everything will, is going to demand you. So, Pfizer, Novartis, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, Roche, Dr. Reddy's, Biocon, Merck, Acuvia, Paraxel. These are the companies which are frequently hiring freshers and these companies are providing entry-level jobs. You can get internships also focusing on training. And of course, uh, once you have your train with us, we will be able to place you in these companies as well. So what is the future prediction for global regulatory affairs? Let us understand one thing. As more and more drugs will come into the market, which will happen because of AI, more demand for regulatory affairs professionals will be there because this is not you know, research by humans. So what if it is wrong? What if it has side effect? So more clinical research demand will be there. And after clinical research, more compliance issues will come up because more drugs are coming, right? So increased demand because of the growing complexity Right, The global regulations are becoming uh, challenging every day. So more demand is there. Technology integration is happening. So we are now using AI, machine learning and digital tools to transform the regulatory process. So more uh, uh, demand for freshers will be there who know AI in regulatory affairs. Now career diversification will also be there. So you will not just be working on this. You'll be working on medical devices. You'll be working on biotech regulations. You'll be working on food tech regulations. So there's, there's more uh, things to learn and uh, implement. And of course, this gives you an opportunity to do new things and not just the boring things, right? And it is not a lab job. It is a desk job. You go, you start your laptop, you work and use your knowledge of biotech. Combine it with the laws and guidelines of FDA, EMA and CDSO and imagine you become a global regulatory affairs manager earning in dollars, spending in rupees. Even you can work from home, that also is a great opportunity. So all you have to do is go ahead, enroll into this course and I will see you soon as a global regulatory affairs manager in one of these companies. Thank you.